surface below. We also need to keep an eye on the movements of upper-level isotherms because movements of upper-level cold air towards the south may cause extratropical cyclones to develop associated with gusts. Special attention should be paid to the movements of isotherms of 500 hectopascals upper-level charts at minus 30 degrees centigrade and minus 36 degrees centigrade in winter and minus 24 degrees centigrade in spring and autumn. As already explained, it's recommended that navigators should use upper-level and surface charts in an optimum combination. Lows generated in a tropical zone are called tropical depressions. In Japan, a tropical depression with a maximum wind speed of 17.2 meters per second or more is called a typhoon. Paths of typhoons generally come in two types, those travelling northwest after birth and those recurving rightwards along the western fringe of the North Pacific Ocean High, then travelling northeast influenced by westerlies. The path of the right turn type is largely dependent on the strength of westerlies and the North Pacific Ocean High. Most typhoons at first tend to advance east, bearing on the North Pacific Ocean High in the 500 hectopascals upper-level chart at its right side, along 5,820 metres or 5,860 metres contour. Recurving points of typhoons may vary corresponding to the pattern of the ridge of atmospheric pressure of the North Pacific High extending east to west. Let's take a look at a few days of movements of one typical developing extratropical cyclone in the near sea areas of Japan in detail, referring to related surface charts. In the near sea areas of Japan, many extratropical lows generate from autumn to spring and sometimes they develop to levels comparable to typhoons. They are categorized into three patterns corresponding to their origins and ensuing tracks as follows. East China Sea Lows, the Japan Sea Lows, and Twin Lows. After the low has moved east under the influence of these three weather phenomena, a typical pressure pattern of highs in the west and lows in the east is often established. Let's take a look at such a typical pressure configuration. A typical winter pressure configuration of highs in the west and lows in the east, as shown in this surface chart, appears from November to March. When the continental high extends to cover Japan, and a developed low exists in the northeast area of Japan in the North Pacific, the winter monsoon grows stronger and lasts longer. In the areas east of Nojimasaki of Japan, marine casualties involving large ships have often occurred due to high waves caused by the winter monsoon, which lasts for a long time with long fetches over the sea surface. In addition, as the southern tip of the upper cold air passes this sea area, causing turbulent air flows due to convection caused by the big difference in temperatures between cold air of the upper layer and the warm surface layer over Kuroshio current, wave heights increase. This is why unusually high waves generate over a wide area. This high wave area extends 30 to 37 degrees north in latitude 
and 140 to 160 degrees east in longitude. As this high wave area appears in the southwest quadrant, far from the centre of the low, it's necessary to know the movements of upper layer cold air from the isotherms of 500 hectopascal upper level charts. It's necessary to know the relative position of a ship to the subject tropical depression or typhoon to minimize its effects. When a typhoon is moving north and wind direction observed on board changes clockwise, the ship is in the right semicircle of a typhoon. In contrast, if the wind direction changes to counterclockwise, the ship is in the left semicircle of a typhoon. The rate of change of wind direction is larger when the distance between the ship and the typhoon is smaller. Conversely, the change becomes smaller when the distance increases. A large change foretells abrupt and drastic directional change of wind direction. The semicircle to the right of the center line of the typhoon's path is called the critical semicircle, where original winds of the typhoon are enhanced by same directional prime mover air current. If a ship is in this semicircle, it will endure a pressing wind towards the center. On the other hand, the reason why the left semicircle of the advancing path of the typhoon is called a navigable semicircle stems from weakening typhoon winds due to the adverse prime mover current of the typhoon. And when a ship is in the right semicircle, the wind presses the ship behind the typhoon. Nonetheless, even in a navigable semicircle, as it accompanies a storm area, proper caution is necessary. Therefore, it is advised that the course is maintained to keep the wind at the starboard bow when in a critical semicircle and at the starboard quarter when in left semicircle to turn away from the typhoon. Today, we can easily receive various maritime meteorological information such as surface charts, upper level charts, ocean wave chart and photos taken by meteorological satellites broadcast by the Meteorological Agency. It's important for seafarers not only to endeavour to acquire the necessary knowledge to make best use of this information, but also to have safe and cost-effective shipping operations. Narrow passages and fairways in rivers and canals where the navigable depth or width is comparatively small in relation to the draft and the breadth of transiting ships are called restricted waters. The manoeuvrability of ships navigating through such restricted waters will be affected by peculiar hydrodynamic effects that are different from those when ships navigate in broad and deep waters. These peculiar hydrodynamic effects that affect the manoeuvrability of navigating ships are the shallow water effects, ship squat, interaction and bank effect. In this video, we intend to present the shallow water effect and ship squat.
When a ship proceeds, surrounding water is displaced towards the sides and bottom, making a relative flow against the ship's advance. The advancing hull submerges deeper compared to when she's dead in the water. This changes the subsequent trim because the water around the hull flows a little faster compared with the ship's speed and the hydraulic pressure decreases. This phenomenon is called ship squat. We shall see this phenomenon with a ship model in a tank test. The Froude number is an essential concept for a model tank test. To run a model at a speed corresponding exactly to that of a real ship, a ship speed is applied using this equation which gives the same Froude number to different model lengths and the comparable real ships. Here you see a ship in a tank test. Let's take a look at the sinkage of the ship at her bow and stern. Let's also look at the subsequent trim change running in deep water by using a ship model in a tank test. This is the bow of a fully loaded small ship running in deep water where the ratio of the depth to the ship's draft is 5.0 at 11 knots. This shows the condition of the stern of the same ship running at 11 knots. This is the bow condition when the ship's speed is increased to 13 knots. This shows the condition of the stern of the same ship at a ship speed of 13 knots. These curves are drawn based on the test results in deep water. As you can see, the sinkage of the bow and stern change like this as the ship's speed increases. The value in this graph represents the ratio of sinkage to the ship length. However, the sinkage at the stern of a merchant ship under normal speed is generally very small. By contrast, the sinkage at the bow appears larger compared with that at the stern. As you see here, a ship underway tends to show trim by the head. Now, using a tank test, we shall take a look at how sinkage at the bow and stern change when a ship proceeds in shallow water. This is a model of a small ship running in shallow water. The ratio of water depth to draft is 1.5 at a speed of 9 knots. This is the stern condition at a speed of 9 knots. This is the bow condition when speed is increased to 10 knots without changing any other conditions. This is the stern condition at a speed of 10 knots. As you can see, the sinkage appears larger at both bow and stern in shallow water. Now we shall see how sinkage changes depending on the speed when a ship proceeds in shallow water. For ship speed with a corresponding Froude number less than 0.25, sinkage at the bow is greater than that at the stern as the Froude number increases. 
However, sinkage at the bow stops suddenly, and that at the stern finally increases when changing trim by the stern as the fluid number approaches 0.25, which is close to the values in high-speed areas. We shall see this effect in shallow water and that in deep water. Sinkage at the bow in shallow water, which reaches 2% of the length of a ship, is larger than that in deep water. So, why do these phenomena happen? In shallow water, where the bottom clearance is comparatively small, the ratio of the horizontal flow along both sides of the ship increases because the current towards the bottom is restricted.